BinQ is a feature-rich webcam which allows you to go from face cam to hand cam in a matter of seconds as it self-orients itself. I don't know if that's a real word, but it is now. And if you're doing any projects that require close-up macro views, perhaps you're trying to capture B-roll of a single board computer like a Raspberry Pi, you can do that with its 15x magnification mode. And so as to not strain your wrist reaching up to your webcam, you have a control puck at your side down on your desk. While this webcam sounds fantastic and it does have some redeeming factors, there are some substantial setbacks that at the price point of $210 are a little bit too loud to ignore. Let's get it. A quick disclaimer for my audience, the Stallions and Stallionettes, this webcam was sent for review, but this is going to be an honest, comprehensive review. I haven't been paid or told to say anything about it, so if there's any cons, shortcomings, or areas of improvement, you're going to hear about it. So these companies make better products over time. As for the packaging and included accessories on BenQ's $210 flagship webcam, the IdeaCam S1 Pro is going to be broken into two sections. You are going to have your Inspire puck at the bottom, which is very nice to have a control module down here and not have to reach up to your webcam to make adjustments. And then the actual webcam unit itself will be in the top. Envelope with your documentation in there, foam block right there. Holy crap, that's a that's a webcam. All your parts or components are individually held in this laser cut foam, which is incredible incredibly snug. It'd be nice if there were some cutouts to be able to get these out just a little bit easier. Now we're cooking with the grease. More foam holding your puck in place. Two included AAA batteries. Love to see that. Incredibly snug in there. Those are socketed very taut. And this is pretty easy to miss, but you have your USB niblet in the bottom right. And then a five foot braided cable, which unfortunately is permanently affixed on this end, which I absolutely hate because if this gets crimped, cut, damaged, you're out a $210 webcam as opposed to a $7 USB cable. That's rather unfortunate. No dust cover on the USB port and a very large sticker I will be cutting off. Little ASMR coming at you. Cut that background music there, big dog. It made no noise, so. As for physical controls, you only have two buttons which are on a very cheap feeling plasticky rocker. One has a light bulb logo and sure enough, that's gonna be for the front LED ring light. And then your function button, which is gonna change their modes. And in the bottom, you have a little cutout or port for the abnormally heavy monitor mount. That envelope is gonna be holding one, two, three, four, five pieces of documentation. First of all, letting you know that they're gonna be happy if you're happy. If you're not happy, let them know in customer support. If you are happy, let them know on social media, pretty much what every company tells you. This is telling you that the Inspire is the best software for your idea cam. It's also the only software. Your safety and regulatory information that has to ship with consumer electronic items, telling you not to swing this thing overhead and use it as a flail to take out your neighbor. Two included AAA batteries that are hangway. They're heavy duty. You heard it here. I'm assuming this is a product registration card to activate the warranty or extend it. However, they don't have an English version, so I'm just going to discard this. This is going to be your privacy screen. It does have a very soft velvety material that will be covering the lens to not scrape the hell out of it. This is your Inspire puck. Is it inspired? We're going to find out later because we're going to be diddling with it a lot. Also nice rubberized feet at the bottom so it won't be sliding around your desk. It still kind of does because it's pretty light. And then this outer silver ring rotates around like a dial wheel while the center stays stationary. And the monitor mount is very heavy duty. Just heavy period. Rubberized surfaces there, there, and there. Standard quarter inch threading. Then a little twist knob on the side labeled that it is going to lock this into place. Now this webcam is incredibly versatile as it does have three recording modes. However, in practice, unfortunately, there are some setbacks or drawbacks in all three of these modes. The most noticeable is going to be just using it as a standard webcam, considering the cord is permanently affixed, not modular or removable. As you can see, I'm overlaying some B-roll here. If I actually wanted to run this cable, this USB-C cord, how I would like to, with a little bit of cable management in mind, dropping it down, then through a cable way underneath my desk, then back up the back of my PC, you can't do that. And I was barely able to get the camera to the left side of my monitor where I wanted it. Next up, that little built-in LED ring is cool, but it does virtually nothing unless you are in a completely dark room. It is primarily used for the macro or close-up mode where you're going to be using that magnifying lens and you need to illuminate your subject. But as far as getting any kind of notable light from it, good luck. Not to mention, as you can see, the image is actually savagely overexposed, which leads me to the biggest issue, and that is that it was very difficult to get this camera up and running with what I would consider consider an acceptable video quality. Now, even this is not fantastic by any means, and I have been able to get 1080p and 1440p webcams looking substantially better than what we're seeing here. With a plug and play USB webcam, you want to be able to do just that. Plug it into one of the USB ports on your PC because you're probably a casual user. Maybe you don't know jack shit about photography or videography. You just want to plug your equipment in and have it work for your Zoom call, or maybe you're trying to dip your toe into the world of live streaming or YouTube entertainment. And you are going to have to do a lot of manual tweakage, a lot 
lot of adjustment of settings to get a somewhat decent picture quality, but still not the best. Also, I noticed this camera did struggle a lot more than it should have with autofocus, especially because I have a very well and evenly lit room and I am pretty much centered in the camera and I'm the only human looking object on camera here. The next major issue is going to be a lack of adjustment as this webcam can be adjusted upward and downward, but not side to side, which I haven't seen with virtually any webcam because all webcams will be able to tilt vertically because it's on a clip or mount to the top of your monitor. However, most webcams also allow you to swivel side to side on a horizontal plane so you can get yourself centered. And equally concerning, the way that the webcam actually snaps into the mount, it doesn't really clip in securely. It just sits in there. I can literally grab it and pull it out. And what's more concerning is when you tilt it forward to look down at your keyboard, to look down at your hand cam, your desk, it feels like gravity could just take it and the webcam could literally fall out of that mount. I will say I really do like the small form factor. A lot of high quality webcams are substantially bulkier with the housing, for example, the Razer Kyo Pro. But what's really funky with this chicken is the fact that since it isn't a 4K webcam, but instead of just stopping at 1440p, the manufacturer stretched to this resolution, which gives you a really weird base canvas. So most applications are going to have some black borders because it's in between 1440p and 4K. And most applications expect a webcam to be 720, 1080p, 1440, or 4K, not an off resolution, a weird, not common resolution or scale size. And as for the puck, it's an awesome design to have that control hub down at your desk to not have to reach up to your webcam. However, that only really works inside of the Inspire application. It's not really inspiring me to do anything because it's a closed off application. So that's really funky that this awesome puck, I mean, the hardware is actually really neato Toledo. However, there's no real software compatibility with it other than Inspire, which you're probably not going to use. Next up, the macro close-up or magnification mode does work. However, it's not the camera that's physically zooming in or changing lenses or even doing anything with software. It is literally just this cheap plastic magnifying lens, which you can find on Amazon dirt cheap and apply that to the front of any camera, the front of your iPhone, for example. And the biggest issue with that close-up mode is the fact that you have to go mobile with it, moving it around, and that cord is permanently affixed and very short. So hopefully your subject that you're trying to get a close-up of isn't very far away for the hand cam mode, I thought this was the most useful and it's probably how I'm going to be using this webcam because as you tilt the camera forward on a 90 degree angle, it looks down at your hand and it automatically sets the orientation. So it'll auto rotate that landscape 180 degrees. So you don't have to do that in post editing, which isn't a huge deal. doesn't really take that much time, but the fact that you just don't have to do it is awesome. But a small drawback to that is the fact that it doesn't feel secure when it's tilted forward because the mount doesn't really clip or snap the camera in place and it feels like gravity can just pull the heavy camera off the monitor mount and then your camera would just be hanging by the cord and that wouldn't be any fun for anybody. I will say at the $210 price point, I was savagely let down at the picture or video quality that I was able to produce out of that webcam considering on the channel I have tested substantially cheaper and also lower resolution webcams, 1080p, 1440p, gotten them looking pretty respectable like. You could definitely run a stream or a podcast. Podcast is audio, I know that. A video podcast. Kevin, that's just a video or a vlog. Uh, you know what I mean. You could make some respect respectable video content out of that webcam or from that webcam as where I wouldn't feel comfortable using the webcam that we tested here today. And that's even after making a lot of settings tweaks that most casual users of a plug and play webcam aren't even going to want to, to do. And just because I wasn't too fond of this particular model doesn't speak anything against BenQ because they've been making phenomenal electronic products for decades. This just doesn't happen to ring my bell and fill up my drip bucket. Thank you, BenQ, for sending this webcam for an honest review. Thank you, Stallions and Stallionettes for watching. This camera is linked in the description below if you want to give it a check out and I'll see you stallions and stallionettes tomorrow. Peace. If you enjoyed the video, liking it helps it to get seen by more gamers. This information will reach in a system as well, which in turn helps me grow this little channel, which I do greatly appreciate. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover news in the gaming community and industry, tutorials helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing, as well as honest gaming product reviews, keyboards, mice, headsets, controllers, mics, chairs, etc. There are some hefty exclusive discount codes found only in the description of my videos and only for the audience here at Gamer Heaven. I have links to all my other platforms and socials in the description below to get in touch with myself and the stallions and stallionettes of gamer heaven join the community discord and check me out at twitch.tv where i go live every other leap year on a blue moon if it falls into an odd calendar number and my ph balance is on point just kidding starting june i'm going to be live streaming a lot thanks for watching this has been ak40 kevin hosting gamer heaven and i'll see you tomorrow because i upload daily all the time 60 percent of the time sometimes most of the time peace